Hi friends, in this video I'm going to talk about the billion dollar mistake in Java programming language and its current solution. So what is billion dollar mistake in Java programming language? Tony Hoare, a great giant in computers, wrote that inventing null reference in Java programming language is a billion dollar mistake because it produces null point exception and stop the program. Hence we are not able to give a good experience to the customers. Let's see an example. Here in this code, what happens if the USB object is null? While accessing the USB, it's going to throw a null point exception and it stops the program. Hence, we'll not be able to give a good experience to our customers. So what can I do to prevent the null point exception? I can use the defensive programming approach in the sense like I can add multiple nested null checks to prevent this condition. But the moment I have multiple nested null checks, the program becomes ugly and, and it has less readability. So so what we need is a typing system to identify the presence and absence of the value in a variable. To handle this issue in Java 8, optional was introduced. It was inspired from Haskell and Scala programming language. We can view the option as a container. Maybe it can contain the value or empty. Now the option class forces me to think about the case when the value is not present. So now I don't need to do the null check often. Instead of that, it was enforced by the type system. It was enforced by the programming language itself, which is really good for the product development. Let's see some code examples for optional class. I've created a class called optional demo. So we're going to see like how to create the different types of option class variables. The first one is like empty sound card. So I've created an optional of sound card type and I'm creating empty. So that means like no value contained in this variable. And here I'm trying to access an empty value, which is not a good practice. The moment we have optional, we should always use is present. We have to check like if it's present, then print it out, otherwise no. So when I run this program, I'm getting no such element exception, no value present. So in this case, the good practice is always check is present and then print it out. In this case, we are using the is present method to check the value. Since the value is empty, we are not printing out anything. This would be a good practice whenever we see optional value. The second type is optional dot off. So when we have to use this type, whenever we are sure there is going to be a non null object, then we can use optional dot off. So let's run this program. So it prints the demo sound card. We are able to get the name from the sound card. Let's see what happens if I pass null here. So if I go inside this method, it says require non null. And if it's null, it's going to throw a null point exception. So let's check that. So we got null point exception. So optional dot off, we have to use whenever we are sure that we have a real object created. The last type is optional dot off nullable. So when I will be using this, whenever I'm not sure the object is, is going to be a real value or null. In this case, I'm going to use off nullable. If it's null, then it will return me an optional dot empty. Otherwise, the real value. So when I run this program, this method will be called here. The moment I look at this data type as a programmer, the type system is enforcing me to use this method is present. So I use this is present, check if it's the value is available, then I access it. Otherwise, it goes to the else part. In this case, it prints the value because we have created a real object. Now let's pass the null value. When I pass the null value, what happens is since we are using off nullable, it will create an empty object. Let's see that. So if the value is null, they are creating an empty value. So we'll be getting empty. That means it will go to the else part. Let's run this program now. So it says no value present. Please fill it. That means it comes to the else part. So in this case, we are not getting any null point exception, which is really good for our product development. Let's see in other programming languages how it's been handled. In Groovy and Kotlin, they're using something like safe navigation operator. So in Kotlin and Groovy, so they're using like this to do the null reference check. And in Haskell, they're using a class called maybe and in Scala, option T type. This is all about the billion dollar mistake which I understood. Hope this video is useful. Thank you.